the glider probably won't fly right the first time because it's not adjusted. To adjust it, you have to launch it right. But launching is counterintuitive. It's easier to learn how to launch if you have a glider that's adjusted right. So it's a classic catch-22. I can shepherd my students through this difficult time, but you'll have to work through this next stage by yourself. Launching a two-for-one is not like throwing a baseball. Baseballs depend on mass and momentum, so you throw them hard and fast. Even most paper airplanes, especially the dart variety, with folded layers to make them dense, are thrown fast. Not so the two-for-one. It's all single-layer wing, all aerodynamic glide. Hold the glider between thumb and finger at the center of gravity, or CG. Point it down a little. You could just drop it, and if it were adjusted right, it would eventually fly right. But by the time it could gain enough speed to fly, it would lose too much altitude. So we push it gently forward at flight speed, which is slower than a regular paper airplane. Almost everybody unconsciously points the glider up or launches it too fast at first, creating a stall. So it climbs up too much, runs out of momentum, and dives, making it hard to take control. Launching has been such a stumbling point that when people begin flying, sometimes one person will take over and focus on the launch so the other person can just concentrate on flying. Test glide in dead calm air. The slightest air current will make adjusting absolutely impossible. Before you launch, take a second to check for kinking. Remember, if one of the ends is kinked down, the glider will dive catastrophically. Less commonly, the whole top can get pushed in. Just pop it back out. Check to make sure the stabilizers are straight up. Your goal is a gentle, steady descent, straight ahead. But when you launch, until you adjust it, your glider will probably either go down too much, which we call diving, or try to go up too much, which it can't maintain, so it dives at least a little bit, though this is the opposite problem, which we call stalling, or it turns too hard to the left or right. Or even more likely, you'll have a combination of these problems. The key thing is, the right or left calibration is intrinsically linked to the up or down balance. So every adjustment you make to steer will also affect the glide descent angle. Here's the method then. All adjusting is done with the elevator, on the left or the right. Pushing the elevator up more on one side tends to steer the glider in that direction because it creates a little more drag on that side. And up elevator makes the glider want to go up more. Up elevator will remedy diving, but worsen stall. Inversely, down elevator on one side reduces the drag on that side, so it tends to steer the glider in the other direction, and it makes the glider want to go down more. Down elevator will remedy stalling, but worsen diving. Note that when we talk about tilting down the elevator, it's still going to be tilted up. It's just tilted up less than it was before. So let's say we launch the glider the first time. It dives and turns to the left. Let's try bending the right side elevator up a little to turn it right and to make it go up more. Oops, I bent the elevator up too much. It does have a longer glide, not diving anymore, but now it turns right. Bouncing from one extreme to the other is part of the learning process. So what would happen if I bend the other elevator, the left one this time, up? Again, I bend it too much. Not only is it turning left again, but also I've been bending the elevators up so much that the glider is stalling. Lowering the left elevator just a little takes care of the stall. There's a bit of a turn, but that's good enough to fly. Here's some examples of glide problems and the first step for solving. Strong right turn and dive. 
up the left elevator. Right turn with some stall. Push the right elevator down. Right turn, but good glide. Right elevator down a tiny bit, and left elevator up a bit. Straight, but severe stall. Bend both elevators down. Straight, but slight stalling. These peaks and dips are called fugoids. This might fly okay, but a very slight push down, perhaps at the middle of the elevator, might help it fly even better. Good glide, slight left turn, it's good enough, time to fly. Although you could use a big book to create the air wave, a big piece of cardboard might be easier to learn on. Unfortunately, the cardboard from boxes can have folds in the middle that makes it hard to handle. Taping pieces of wood or even pencils across the fold might help. Or frequent bends with the grain of the cardboard so as to make a curve might help. If you make a curve, Point the curve to the front when you fly. The hang glider made from the pattern paper flies quite fast. Maybe we should call it a jet instead. Unless you step into the launch, by the time you catch up, it'll be too low. So step or walk forward as you release it into the wave of air. Just about every beginner flies the glider below the top of the cardboard. Although you can make it fly if you run fast enough, half the wave is passing over the glider, not helping lift it. A good way to get a feel for surfing high is to intentionally go too fast and make the glider blow right over the top. Then just slow down a little bit from that, just short of going over. If you flatten out the cardboard angle, you will not deflect as much air. So there's not much of a wave to surf on. Again, you can fly, but you'll have to run fast to make up for the small wave. At first it seems like the glider turns capriciously, but actually you can turn it with a slight turn of the cardboard to sort of hurt it in the right direction. It's easier to get the hang of this in a wide open space like a gym. It's not just air vents. If you fly near your friends, you'll get bumped out of the air by their wake of turbulence. Oh, I feel turbulence! Oh, oh no! Beautiful, beautiful! Look! 